Okay, continuing on with section 6.1, uh, we could get a, um, sometimes we can get a problem in which it gives us the confidence interval, and it asks us for the margin of error, or it asks us for the point estimate. And you can find those by either subtracting or adding the two endpoints together. For example, uh, this problem here it says a 99% confidence interval for the average age of Maryland college students is somewhere between 24 to 26. Well, let's find the margin of error and the point estimate. Okay, to find the margin of error, you would take uh, these two and subtract them, and then divide by two, and you'll get one. That would be the margin of error. Uh, to get the point estimate, which would be the sample mean, you add the two together and divide by two. So add these two together, you get 50, divided by two is 25. Now you can check this. The uh, confidence interval is really your point estimate, which is your X bar, plus or minus your margin of error. So if you take 25 plus or minus 1, you'll get 24 to 26. And the same is true with the uh, last problem that we did. If we want to get the margin of error right here, and we just had this confidence interval kind of working the opposite way, if we had this confidence interval, how would we get this margin of error? Well, we would subtract these two numbers, take 99.55 from 103.99, and divide by 2, and you'll get the margin of error 2.22. How would we get the point estimate of 101.77? Add these two together and divide by two, and you'll get the point estimate. Okay, let's go to sample size determination. And sample size determination answers the question of how many people do you need to sample, or how many more people do you need to sample. If you were doing this by hand, you would use this formula right here, where the number of people that you need to sample is your z-score times your sample standard deviation divided by your margin of error, and then you take that and you square it. And that would be the formula. This derives the formula for you there. But let's go ahead and do a problem. Excel has a place for you to uh, put in your data, and it will do it. Uh, this problem right here says, how many more fares must be included in your sample if you want to be 95% confident that your sample mean is within $2 of the population mean? This is referring to those air flights. And again, it says, how many more? Okay, we already sampled 35, so we have a sample mean and a sample standard deviation and all that sort of stuff. We just need to know how many more than 35 air flights do we need to get our margin of error down to 2. Well, taking a look at this problem, right now our margin of error is down to 2.22. Okay, and I think it said to maintain that 95% confidence level right there, 95% confidence. Okay, so... Uh, We'll leave that be 95%, like it says. And you can mess around with this and see, you know, how many more people you need to sample till you get this down to two point, until you get this margin of error down to two, like the problem says. But right below here is an area that says sample size. So see this sheet here, one mu sheet, does everything for means. It does uh, uh, confidence interval, sample size determination, and even on chapter seven, when we do hypothesis tests for the mean, it does that too. So you put in your confidence level right there, which in this problem is 95%. Put in your margin of error that you are supposed to get it down to, which it says two for this problem. Okay, and then put in your sample standard deviation, which is 6.69, and this tells you the total number of um, air flights that you would need to sample, 43. Now, 43 is not the answer to this problem because it said how many more air flights would you need to sample? So we already sampled 35. That's what we had to begin with here. 35 air flights were sampled. So you need to take the 35 off of the 43, and that gives you eight more air flights that need to be sampled. And that would be the answer to that problem. Now, if you don't have your sample standard deviation, like uh, the last problem, we had an estimate for the standard deviation. We had the sample standard deviation that we used right here. And that's because we were given it or we were given the raw data to use. But sometimes you may not be given your sample standard deviation. It'll say a certain confidence level, and it'll tell you to get the margin of error down to a certain bit, but it won't give you the sample standard deviation. Well, if they don't give you the sample standard deviation or the raw data to get the sample standard deviation, you can approximate the standard deviation by taking the range, which is your high minus your low, divided by 4. So let's um, say that last problem, that all we had was the high score and the uh, low score. That's all we had. Okay, and the high score was 117, and the low score was an $87 
air flight from uh, Atlanta to Chicago. So if we wanted to estimate the standard deviation here using this high and this low, we would just subtract them and divide by 4. And if you take 117 minus 87 divided by 4, you get 7.5. Now if we wanted to see how many people would we need a sample, we have an estimate for a standard deviation that we could put in. So right here, we would just put in 7.5, and that gives me approximately 55 people that have, uh, 55 air flights that I would need to sample. And that would be the, the, the answer to that problem if we didn't have a previous estimate. See, if we have a previous estimate, we have a standard deviation, and we already have so many air flights. So we would subtract that off of the 43 that we had there earlier. But if we don't have a previous estimate, we don't already have the 35 flights. So our answer would just be 55 more air, uh, well, 55 air flights total that we would have to uh, sample, and that would be the answer to that problem there. And that pretty much does it with uh, section 6.1. Uh, and then we'll get into small sample size uh, on the uh, next uh, video.